accepted by people. So you have a brother, mashallah, you know, uh, he has maybe, for example, uh, dressed Islamically or possibly he visits the masjid regularly and then he has a certain group of people who don't read Salah at all and he's the only one. And then he starts mixing with them. What happens? If he's not careful, he might end up giving up his Salah. And if we do that, it has what I called moments ago, subhanallah, an impact. It has a reaction. There is a repercussion. There is something that we will have to live with because of the decisions we've made. I didn't read Salah. What happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me. He's upset. He's waiting for me to turn. Which means, if a person does, commits a sin, remember one thing, we as Muslims look at it as follows. A person commits a sin, they still have hope on condition that they turn back to Allah. I want to say that again. If a person commits a sin, they still have hope on condition that they turn back to Allah immediately. There is a, a verse in the Quran which speaks about adultery and which speaks about other sins. And Allah says, if you turn to Allah after that, Allah says, those are the people we will give Jannah to. Those who've turned. Listen to the verse. <laughs> those who have committed immorality, an act of immorality which includes adultery, or they have oppressed themselves in one way or another, meaning they've sinned. Dhakarullah, they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately after that they regret. What makes you regret? The hadith says, Ida sarratka hasanatuka wa sa'atka sayyatuka fa anta mu'min. When your good deed makes you feel good and your bad deed makes you regret, it's a sign of iman. It's a sign that you're a mu'min because if you did not have that answerability to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where would you feel? guilty after committing a sin. So if you've committed a sin and you think to yourself, I shouldn't have done that. Why did I do that? That's a sign that Allah loves you. It's a sign that Allah's still giving you that flicker of Iman. You have the answerability in your heart. It's a good sign. But with that, you need to turn to Allah and say, Allah, forgive me. And Allah says, those who seek forgiveness in the verse I read, He says, They remembered Allah and they sought forgiveness. Saying, who can forgive the sin besides Allah? No one. We don't have a Rabb besides Allah. Allah is our maker. The maker, the nourisher, the cherisher. I always tell people, and it's something very interesting, that you know the word Allah. A lot of the non-Muslims hear it and they think, oh, these people worship maybe a black box, maybe a stone, maybe, you know, something funny. No, Allah is from Ali Hayallahu. It is from the Arabic root to worship. And Allah is al Ma'lu. al Ma'lu means the worshipped one. So what I am saying in effect is Allah, the worshipped one. Who is the worshipped one? Rabbun. The one who made, the one who nourishes, cherishes, sustains, provides for, protects. The one with absolute control of all creation. I call him the worshipped one. He alone deserves to be worshipped. What powerful concept of Godhood in Islam. Nobody can argue with it. No one. If I were to tell you that we worship our maker alone, who can argue with that? No one. If I tell you I put my head on the ground solely for my maker, when I say Subhana Rabbi Al A'la, do you know what I'm saying? All praise is due to, or glory be to, my Rabb, my Rabb meaning my creator, the one who made me, who is the highest. What a powerful statement, Subhanallah. What a powerful statement. The one who made me, for him I put my head on the ground, for no one else. Allahu Akbar. So this verse. We are saying that Allah, the maker, will forgive us. Who is there that we have who will forgive us besides our own maker? The one whom we are going to return to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah says, وَلَمْ يُصِرُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ And if these people leave their sins and do not continue committing the sin, whilst knowing, knowingly, intentionally, continuing committing the sins, they don't do that, Allah says, for those people, they will receive forgiveness from their heart. They will be granted paradise. Beneath which rivers will be flowing of all sorts and there is a description of Jannah, mashallah. And what a great abode for those who have done good deeds. So a good deed 
is not only a deed like salah and zakah and so on, but to leave that which is so tempting for the pleasure of your maker is a brilliant deed to the degree that in another place in the Quran, I think it is Surah Al-Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ Allahu Akbar. Those who have been committing sins for so long and repent and leave everything for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from that day do good deeds, Allah says we take all the bad deeds and we convert them into good deeds on the right side of the scale so when they get onto the day of Qiyamah they will see Hajj, they will see Zakah, they will see Salah that they did not fulfill and they will say, Ya Allah, where are these deeds from? And Allah will say, La dhulman yawm, no oppression today. Those are your sins. After your repentance, we converted them into good deeds. And this verse is in the Quran. How, how then can we lose hope in the mercy of Allah? How then can we lose hope in the mercy of Allah? He loves every one of us. Every one of us, without exception. No one. There is no exception. And we have access to him, equal access. Just like I have access to him, so do you. And so do all the sisters, and so do the brothers, and so does everyone else. We have access. But let's make use of that access. Today, if you knew, mashallah, the Prime Minister of Britain, if he was just a phone call away, what would happen? We are a big deal. People would want to know us, mashallah, isn't it? Because a very, very important person, we've got access to them any time of the day or night. Everyone would want to know us. We have access to the maker of the entire creation. What do we do with it? Inshallah, let's do something about it. So, to leave bad company for the pleasure of the creator is something that is called for. The consequence of being in bad company is dangerous. Like I said, we need to ask ourselves, this is where I am. This is my condition today. Where would I like to get to? Sometimes we don't even know where we want to get to. We don't even have a plan. We don't even know what we'd like to achieve. But we all should be saying, I want to get to somewhere higher. In the same way that in this world, we are studying. For what? In order to get a job. In order to get a job to do what? To serve humanity, that's a noble, mashallah. And to earn a salary. And to live for how many more years? To live for another 30 years, I think, after graduation. After we are settled in properly. Another 30 years, maximum 40, maybe. You know, if, you're, if you graduate at 25, 30, by the time you settle down in your own business, everything is yours, you'd probably be about 35, 40. How many more years do you have to live? I think another 30, 40 years, not more. Basically, the average is 60 to 70. So we came to the varsity. We learned for so many years in order to live for an equal number of years. Then, what happens? Can you say, I was at Leeds. Jibreel, I was at Leeds. Now I'm in my grave. You see that certificate? Yeah, I was there. I had a good talk one day, you know. Yeah, I need Jannah, you know. That's not going to help us. Not at all. But if we were dedicated, we helped people get one inch closer to Allah. Whilst we were at varsity, Wallahi al-Azim, I tell you, that will come to save us in our graves. And in the Akhirah. And believe me, as Muslimin, what is one of the core beliefs? Life after death. That's why we will protect ourselves from being gay. We will protect ourselves from tattooing our foreheads. We will, the, the, the brothers, inshallah, will protect themselves from wearing these earrings and so on, jewelries and half bummers and so on. Allah safeguard us all. I don't know what you call it. I've just developed a name because that's what it looks like. <laughs> so, so to be honest with you, yesterday we had a brother in Glasgow. Mashallah, I see this brother had a big earring and he came to me. Very, very good brother. Really good. He asked me a few questions and I answered him with his few questions, mashallah. And guess what he did? He removed his earring and said, I've been wearing this since the age of eight. From today, no more. I said, Wallah, if it's for the pleasure of Allah, this might be your jannah. Wallah, Allah is looking for one little thing, one small little thing that was so hard for you to do that you've done solely to please him. And Allah says, you know what? I don't want to look at your salah, your zakah, your what, 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 what. There's one deed that I'm so happy with just going to paradise. I'm sure you know the hadith of the prostitute who fed or who quenched the thirst of a little dog. Subhanallah. What happened? Allah says, according to the hadith that was narrated to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she achieved jannah in return for the compassion that she had for a dog when it was dying. Allahu Akbar. What does that mean? The moral of that story is, do not underestimate the value of a small speck of a deed. 
Do not underestimate the value of a little speck of a, of a deed. This is why I firmly believe do not judge books by their covers. You know, you might have a brother who might, you know, look like he's one of the clubbers and so on. But believe me, his link with Allah might be higher than someone who may appear to be so religious. And the same applies with the sisters. I am one. Wallahi, I have no judgment. I have a non-judgment policy. Nobody. That's it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness.